like you've joined us. Can you're on mute? You want to take yourself off? Commissioner, you may start. Oh, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is the February 24th meeting of the Environment Committee of the City of Rehoboth Beach. And it is 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm gonna do a quick roll call. For the, for the record, we've got Eric Seward, uh, Joseph Vessio, Mary Peck, Heather Metz, Charlie Garlow, and myself, the chair, uh, present for the meeting. And we've got three sets of minutes that were um, attached to the agenda. Um, September 3rd, 2021, December 3rd, 2021, and January 7th, 2022. Um, has everyone had time to review those? Um, we can either vote on adopting all of them or um, together, or we can vote on them separately. Um, I just need someone to, uh, to make a motion. Anyone? I motion to approve. All, all three sets of minutes? All three, yes. And a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Signal aye. Positive, aye. Aye. Four. Any opposed? All right. And the minutes are approved unanimously. Um, we do have one. Um, we do have one uh, letter of correspondence also attached uh, to the uh, agenda, and that is an email from Mr. William Cook um, addressing um, some noise pollution. Um, and we've got. Uh, uh, We've got an agenda item later later on in the meeting that uh, that may hit on some of the topics he's outlined in his his letter. Uh, first, uh, I want to start with old business an update on the Sussex County wastewater outfall. Um, the they have come back and uh, withdraw. Uh, they withdrew their their request, um, so that is no longer. Um, something that we're considering uh, in the city of Rehobo Beach. Um, so we won't have to discuss any environmental impacts uh, it may have. Uh, second, um, I have- Can I interrupt for a minute to say that Nettie is having trouble getting in. She's tried dialing in. Is Max Hanby able to help her by sending a dial-in telephone number or something? Max or Grant? It's on, it's on the meeting and what she received. Can you send her that telephone number to make sure you, she's got the right one? She already received it. She should have, if she's received the invite, it was on there. Well, she said she didn't receive it. That's why I'm asking for your help. Oh, you so can she send didn't the second time. Okay, I will help her. You guys can continue. Thank you, Max. Sorry, Edward, go ahead. Yep, yeah, sure. I, and I, I emailed that to her uh, just a little while ago as well. Um, okay, uh, so I was uh, just getting on to the um, Sustainable um, Climate Action Plan. Um, I have sent um, the, to the mayor and commissioners the, um, uh, the, the sheet from us um, so we now will just uh, wait until the mayor and commissioners have it on an agenda, you know, have it on one of their meetings uh, to discuss, uh, to give us a path forward 
um, or for them to take over holding um, uh, specific meetings related to it. Um, I suspect that it'll come back to us with specific action items. Um, and I suspect that we'll take the, the lead on, on pushing that forward with some specific direction from them. So that is a, a brief update um, on that. Edward, if I may add to that, it might yeah. be good for us to update our proposal with the news that was in yesterday's Cape Gazette, or I guess it was Tuesday's Cape Gazette about Dewey Beach establishing a new um, climate action group to look at and then get these issues going. Did you see that article? Um, I, I did not see the article, but I did speak to the, uh, the gentleman that is chairing that committee um, last week. Uh, Gary Persinger? Yes. Um, I did speak to him um, and sort of gave him um, the lay of the land on, on what we're doing and how we're, we're, what process we're taking. Um, so they're just uh, a few steps behind us, um, but I think uh, we may be able to have some collaboration with, with Dewey as they're, they're going through the same process. Great, thank you. Um, um, and one of the things you were saying about the, um, the correspondence that, that we received about the um, noise pollution, did you, you imply that that might relate to our, our climate action plan discussions or? No, I, um, I, uh, I added uh, under new business an agenda item uh, discussing noise pollution um, related to leaf blowers and other landscape equipment. Uh, that was, I think, one or two of the members of this committee least listed it as uh, a, a topic that we wanted to, to take up. Okay, because it also, you know, going requiring electric versus gas powered is something that, that we, we kind of re would refer to and, and would be part of a, a climate action plan as well. Right, yeah, it, there's, there's certainly some overlap. Yeah. I think anything we do that might might also be part of a climate action plan. Because I guess noise pollution isn't really in the environment committee's jurisdiction or as I understand it, but um, I'll, I'll wait till you bring that one up. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I guess refer to it as noise pollution because there, there are specific items like using electric versus gas, uh, lawn care equipment, it's, um, et cetera. So, but we can have a more in-depth conversation um, about that. Um, anything else on the sustainable climate action plan? Okay. Um, I wanted to bring up the wireless technology design manual and ordinance again. Um, that's uh, something that we've been, we've been working on with the mayor and commissioners. Um, and I just wanted to see if there are any further comments um, about that. Heather, I, I know you've been following that one uh, closely. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress and we're, we're, we're moving along with it. Um, I think um, one, one thing that has been a struggle is um, working with the consultant, coming up with a, using the best available um, economically feasible technology. Um, so uh, just wanted to put that back on an agenda here uh, so I can provide any comments that this committee has um, about that. So I'll open it up, Heather, if, if you've got any comments. Yeah, um, I'd love to just make a quick comment that uh, I fully support what the mayor and commissioners are doing. Uh, I think you should continue to uh, work with the consultant to get the language the way that you want it. The you know, please remember the consultant works for you. Yeah. And as Michael Strange pointed out, uh, there are some things with on, within our control as a city of Rehoboth Beach and things that we can ask the providers to do. And we should um, absolutely get the most out of that, including the best available technology, uh, including updating the design manual to make all the aesthetics as pleasing as possible, to have full control over what happens in our city. I think uh, some people from Verizon are um, 
maybe not working in the best faith and that the city really should make sure that they're a leader on this. And, and I fully support what you guys are doing. So if I can help in any other way, um, please let me know. And uh, you know, just want to voice my support. Thank you, thank you. Uh, anyone else, any comments on our uh, design manual for wireless technology? Okay, this is quick. Um, <clears throat> next, I want to talk about um, the, the offshore wind farms um, and, and the process we're gonna take for this. Um, I, I've since learned that there's going to be um, at least the Beach and Boardwalk Committee is also interested in this topic. Obviously, um, I think more um, about the aesthetics and the view shed from the Beach and Boardwalk and any impact that may have. Um, so I, what, what I'm going to propose is that instead of hearing from a lot of these interested parties sort of piecemeal, and you know, maybe one or two a meeting for however meetings that uh, I try to get the, the mayor to agree that we have a joint meeting with the, the Beach and Boardwalk Committee, an extended meeting, we hear from everyone at the same time, um, all, everyone that you know, we want to present information to us, everyone that we want to ask questions of, um, we do that together. And then separately, we go back to our committees and, and discuss it and come up with specific um, uh, action items from us. Um, but, but first, uh, before doing that, I want us to, one, make sure we have identified everyone we want to hear from, um, um, all of the specific groups and individuals. Um, and we have a clear objective of, of what our goal is, right? We're hearing about wind power. I think we can all agree that wind power is, is great, but there's other considerations. So what exactly is our objective of, of hearing from all of those, those, in, um, those individuals and groups? Um, and then make sure we've identified that we're covering all every base and we're hearing from, from everyone that we need to. So that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today is what's our objective um, and, and make sure that we're identifying everyone that we need to hear from. Any, any thoughts on objective, Nettie? Mute here. Yep. Um, <clears throat> hello, everybody. Um, anyway, a, we, a bunch of us with the green drinks the other day uh, heard Willard Kempton from the University of Delaware about this whole issue and I thought a very significant point that he brought up, and I was only there for a half an hour, was that the state in considering this should have, should open it up for competitive bids that we need to get the best price. And I think having just Osted, we just, we just have this one corporation, as Heather has reminded us, that is for profit. And we have no other no other bids and I'm wondering I think that's a very very good point and um so one of the objectives for us to consider is that it's um uh, it's the state of Delaware and us as, as citizens of the state of Delaware are getting um the most bang for a buck we, we're being you know we're, we're looking for competitive bids, yeah. Edward, I might add that there are a lot of people who might want to come to our meetings and testify, people who are not maybe necessarily residents of Roboth Beach. Uh, I mean, there's the wind industry people might want to come and testify. It could be a lot of extended hearings if we open it up that wide. We might want to try to provide some guardrails so that we're not you know, stuck in a hearing all day long. Yeah, well, I, I certainly, um, that's why I want us to identify who we want to hear from yeah. uh, specifically. So that, that's the purpose of this, you know, this meeting. Um, I think, Edward, that from my mind, I, it's not clear what at all what, what the agenda is because um, there's been many, or, or 
meetings regarding the Orsted project held by either Orsted or DENREC or, or whoever. And I don't know that it's our role specifically to present an information about the, the Skipjack project off of Fenwick Island, or are we going to have people talking about what's contemplated going in the future for, for all of coastal Delaware? I mean, it's, I, I would like to know what, what is, what's our agenda? Um, because um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And, and um, it, it, it seems like it started out with um, maybe the city of, of Ocean City, Maryland, wanting us to um, listen to their views on what's what's going on there. Um, but, I, you know, this the city doesn't really have any legal role in what, you know, what's going on with Skipjack, which is the only currently project in the pipeline. But um, so are we just trying to get people's views about the impact on us or, or are we getting information about the future, what's coming, what the technology is? I mean, I, I wish we could narrow it down a little bit what, what we're trying to do. I, I think it's a combination of both. I think the, the, the project in the pipeline, um, the, the Skipjack one um, is going to have an, an impact potentially on our views in Rehoboth Beach, right? I, I think that is, that is one thing that most people are concerned about. I, I think that's the project that Ocean City, uh, Maryland has taken, the mayor there has taken the position and, and he's looking for other coastal communities like Rehoboth to, to take a position. Um, and I, I think that's, that's what started this and that's what is prompting the discussion. And I think that although we don't have any legal, um, you know, standing in, in, in some of these things, we do have a voice as, a, as probably one of the most popular destinations in Delaware um, of our concerns. And we can pass those on to our representatives um, at the federal level, as well as the state level, as well as the county. Um, and if we've got concerns that we want them to address or listen to, or um, that we're asking them to do that as a, as a city and as you know, the summer, the nation's summer capital. So I think that's, that's the agenda. And well, personally, we I, I would really be interested to hear what are plans for, for future projects? What's in the pipeline? If we had anybody that could enlighten us um, and also the technology of, you know, these are changing all the time. Um, and, you know, as time goes on, um, the size of the windmills that we're talking about is, has changed. And I would like to just have, you know, really people who know exactly what we're dealing with. Um, because so much, there's so much misinformation out there and there's so many, I hear so many people making loose comments that are really not accurate. Um, so it would really be great if we had people who are actually in possession of facts about what, what, are, what is being proposed these days um, and what can we expect? Um, are, are we still talking about certain size of windmill or, or how far offshore are they going to be? And you know, just that technical information. I would really like to hear that. Yep. I think that's yeah. right. invite representatives and, of the Orsted and U.S. Wind companies who seem to be major actors in our area. They would certainly be able to help with Mary's questions. Yeah. And and I I feel that if if we just like Mary's saying, um, if we just open it up, we're going to get a lot of people. You know, we're, we're just going to be discussing like for wind power, against wind power. I mean, having wind power, I think, is kind of a no brainer, <laughs> but there are so many other issues that we need to deal with. I don't, I right. think if we just open it up, we're just asking people to come in that, you know, that are saying, well, I don't know, you know, this whole thing that Mary's saying that we're just opening it up for people to come in and argue that they don't want to see this out in the ocean and 
you know, uh, that it gets to be this emotional thing without the facts and without dealing with several different companies that um, maybe one has less environmental um, impact on our ocean, maybe one is less expensive. Um, I think it's, I think we're for wind power. We, we are for, you know, solar power. It's, but it can be that kind of discussion. Well, are you for wind power or yeah. not for wind power? Okay. You know, kind of thing. And I don't, I really don't know that that's, you know, what we should be conducting. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I, I said in the in the onset, we have to be very specific on the objectives. We 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 like solar power, we like wind power. That's not what we're here to discuss. We're here to, to talk about the other considerations um, and impacts that that such a project may have. Um, the specifics, the details, the technology, um, many of the things that that Mary just mentioned. Um. Can I just say, I, I agree with you guys, uh, totally agree with you guys. I think um, in the grand scheme of having a meeting, I think if we're gonna have um, a climate action plan that we're putting forth to the city, that we sort of have an obligation to really fully understand this aspect of that part of the climate action plan. There's of course the um, aesthetic impact of the wind farm and the impact to our you know, visitors to our coastal area, but then there's that, that other portion, which I think we really justifiably have um, an obligation to, you know, have some voice in it. Um, I would really, really encourage everybody to go to the Orsted website and read through it. Uh, there's a lot of information there. There's a lot of details. It raised a lot of questions in my mind. And I tried to look at it objectively from the lens of, you know, yes, we need wind power. Yes, we support renewable energy, but also to look at it uh, from the perspective of what portion of that sounds like it was written by the PR people and what portion of that sounds like, well, you know, gee, if I crunch the numbers on that, it makes sense, right? So I would really encourage everybody to go to the website and see what they're putting out. Again, that's not necessarily all factual information. That's just what's on their website, but it would really um, bring everybody kind of up to the level where we can start talking about the details and um, again, I think we do have an obligation as Rehoboth to have some sort of a, you know, whether you guys decide you want to have a goal and then invite people to come and speak on that specific goal, or whether we want to have a series of questions and invite people to come and answer those specific questions. I think it does need to be somewhat specific, um, but I definitely do think that, you know, we justifiably have something to say about this for sure. There's the environmental impact, there's the health impact, there's lots of different impacts, but do we have, again, Edwards asking for a mission or a statement of the purpose or why are we doing this? Is it for the city of Rehoboth Beach to take a position favoring or opposing an individual wind farm or the concept of wind farm developments off our coast generally? All those things may very well depend upon how big these things are going to be in the future, how far out they're going to be in the future. It's a very fluid sort of a situation. So it's, it's hard to know exactly where to draw the line as to what we want to have a discussion about. Right. It's, it, to, uh, you guys are uh, much more uh, knowledge, knowledgeable than I am with this. Is the, the Skipjack project, and that's being, um, Orsted is the company that's doing that project. Is that right? Right. Is that the only the only thing in the pipeline right now? No. There's another uh, Skipjack 2 wind farm that's been going through the process. And there are other sections of the offshore area, which BOEM, the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, is looking to set out for uh, bids for auction so that uh, other companies like U.S. Wind may very well be a player in all this as well. So it, it sounds like, it, it sounds like it's going to be twofold. We've got one in the pipeline that we may or may not want to take a position on, but then I think we, we also want to um, set our expectation or, or tone going forward with, with any, any new projects that, that may be, that may come up. 
Is is this a meeting with all of those groups, Charlie? Like, I mean, are we just meeting, being asked to meet with Orsted or meet with these other people? I mean, I know when Blue Water Wind came through and that was a long time ago, the Middle Ages. <laughs> and we basically, you know, people hollered and screamed and it disappeared and nothing happened for years and years and years. Okay. Uh, you know, are we just nixing it by, by not even considering it? Or could we have all these different companies come for this meeting? And then we ask questions. I mean, or if people need to, is it just that people from Ocean City and Dewey and Fenwick need to hear from us? about what we feel about wind power or is it that we're considering different companies and who's going to do the best thing you know what i guess a lot I, of questions there nettie uh, yeah. i don't know if we have answers for all of your questions yeah i mean it's i, it's, I it's, think that from what i what i've heard you know that we have the the, the scoop jack project is pretty far along and they're trying to figure out where in Delaware they're gonna bring their cables um, ashore. Um, and, but also as we all have heard, there's a lot of potential for wind power all, all up our coast. And so um, it would be good to hear, not necessarily from companies trying to promote themselves, but I don't know if we could get somebody from, from the federal government or, you know, University of Delaware, I don't know who um, can kind of give us the, bring us up to speed about all the, what's going, potentially happening because um, right. yeah. Sounds like music it's not in the me. Background. Are you able to see where I'm coming from and, and mute it? Thank you. So anyhow, um, I think that it would be helpful um, for us to kind of know what what the overview, you know, because um, I think there's there's a lot of potential that we would have wind wind uh, farms right off our coast, although we don't know specifically. And I do think that we, you know, maybe somebody in, in who who oversees these issues with with um, the federal government would would really be great to have. Charlie, who 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 would be that person or group? Um, you mentioned Denrec um, earlier. Do they have a point person that is kind of looking at, at all these things off our coast? Is it a federal agency? Well, th is there is a federal agency that I identified earlier, BOEM. I don't know that they want to come or that we want to have them. They've got a vision of what is going to happen from Maine to Florida on offshore wind. Uh, Dr. Willett Kempton, the University of Delaware, is uh, probably our local expert on wind power generally and about those that are specifically being proposed off our shore here in Delaware. So he might be a good person to invite to speak uh, Okay. He's not in the pocket, if you will, of any particular companies or anything like that. So he's uh, neutral in that sense. And he should be issuing, his group should be issuing a report here in another couple of weeks about the uh, prospects for uh, offshore wind and what their costs might be and things like that, if anybody has questions about costs. Yeah, it seems like it, that would be a good place to start, Charlie, because then we could have a list of our objectives that we could then listen to companies and see if they meet our, the objectives that we've already set ahead of time so that we're not just hearing sales pitches from folks, but that we have specific objectives that we would like to see in offshore wind farms, you know, in our jurisdiction and then see how well these companies meet those objectives that we've already set up before we start. But it sounds like uh, Mr. Kempton may be the a good starting point and, and the discussion with him may help us identify goals and objectives. 
we could invite him to our next meeting if you want. I think that I think that's a good first start. Uh, Charlie, would you be able to make it an email introduction? Sure. Thank you. Any other discussion on on this uh, on this topic? I think we've got a path forward potentially. Um, okay. Uh, next uh, was just an update on the um, the the Stroll initiative. Um, I I forwarded that letter with um, the climate action plan. Um, I'm asking um, one. I, I it. I don't know if uh, will the city manager will make an administrative decision or we'll discuss it um, in a mayor and commissioners meeting. Um, but. Uh, um, I'm going to ask that regardless um, of officially sending the letter out, um, whether one, it can be done electronically. Um, we've got that new newsletter um, in the city, Lines in the Sand. I think um, our new uh, director of communications is doing a fairly good job. I'm gonna ask that that information be put in there. I'm also asking Main Street to put it in their newsletter um, they have a pretty good open rate with the, the business community. Um, so we'll wait to hear back from the city on, on the letter um, that we've sent them. But in the meantime, I'm going to ask for these other things uh, to be done, which I think will help uh, get the word out about our, our Stroll initiative. Edward, could I add that uh, just yeah. as a personal matter, I go around to restaurants and I find that almost all the residents I've gone to all have paper straw. So our request for voluntary compliance with uh, no plastic straws or reducing them uh, has been working. I'm very pleased with what I've seen. I don't know what other people's reaction or what their experiences have been. I know when I was taking the placards around, there were a number of restaurants that said, oh, we're doing it already. So we'll put yeah. the placards up, but um, you know, as a reminder, but yeah. That, that, uh, so that was pretty encouraging to hear. Yeah, I, I, the initiative was great, um, and I, I'm glad I'm glad we did it. Um, but I was, I think we were already maybe a, a leader in the state with a lot of companies already doing it before we asked them to. I know Dogfish had um, they've been doing it for a very long time, and they've been sort of a, a vocal leader um, in that with with other businesses too. So. Um, yeah, I, I mean, and we'll just continue to get the word out and, and hopefully, you know, keep uh, changing, changing the mindset of people one by one and, and we'll just keep plugging along. Hey, Edward, I talked to Maddie Brown at Camper Hobbit, you know, yeah. about putting something in the letters publication. He said the best way to do that is uh, a letter to the editor. So if you want, I can draft something up for you to look at. Yeah, that would be great. Um, it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt for us to do um, maybe the environment committee. We do a, a letter to the editor of the Cape Gazette too, um, and and by that uh, it may get may get them to do their own article as well. Um, but I, so I think uh, utilizing some of the groups like Camper Hobith, Main Street. Um, help, you know, asking them to help get the word out too is going to be very, um, is going to be helpful. Are, it. We, are we really thrilled with uh, paper straws being handed out? I mean, is that, is that success that we've gone from, you know, plastic straws to paper straws, which are lined in plastic? And, or, or do we, really want people to just do straws upon request, which is what we initially said. Uh, good I mean, point. we seem so thrilled. We seem so thrilled with uh, the fact that people are handing out paper straws. I guess it's baby steps. You know, we got <laughs> them to at least go from plastic to paper. So maybe then the next step is uh, upon request and see how that goes. Because I was planning to revisit the, the restaurants that I went to just to see how they're doing and 
see if they need any more placards or anything, just to kind of, you know, reinforce what I talked with them about last fall. So maybe that, that might be another step that we could take. We have extra placards at my house, 82 Sussex <laughs> Street. If anybody wants to swing by there on the front porch, help yourself, all you can eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And I, I'm not sure that, you know, I, I referenced uh, businesses using paper shawls and I, I don't know that, that they're just, they're, they have paper. I don't know that they're necessarily putting one in every drink or, or handing them out. Um, I certainly, I, I don't like drinking through straws, so I never take a straw anyway. But, um, but that that's a good question, Eddie. And it's, you know, I, it sounds like that was that was the point of the initiative, and and let's not lose focus of that. Yeah, I don't drink my beer or my wine with a straw. <laughs> I think too that during COVID, you know, in the height of it, I think some people that went to restaurants felt safer using a straw. So maybe things will relax a little bit more. I'm not sure. It's, it is hard work though. I mean, Joe, I, <laughs> it, it really, it, it's a lot of work to go hand out all these placards, carry them around, you know, uh, and then I really don't know how much people are putting them out and then going back and revisiting and uh, and then finding, you know, without this letter coming from the commissioners for companies like Five Guys and, um, you know, the, the different companies that are large corporations, Subway, um, I don't know. I, I just feel that we're we're not taking it as seriously as, and it's the one, you know, <laughs> I mean, sometimes I get very frustrated at what we're accomplishing, you know, as a, as an environment group, it's, it's, we've been working on straws now for, of course it's been COVID, but during for about two years and we're still, you know, we're still at this point with straws. So, <laughs> I think too, we're working with a lot of different, you know, policies within each mm -hmm. restaurant has their own policy, whether it's a national chain or local. And so, you know, yeah. trying to herd those cats is, is, is challenging sometimes, you know. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. And, you know, I, maybe in a, a few months, a year from now, whenever this committee decides, we go back to the mayor and commissioners and, and want you know, I think we passed a resolution for this. Um, uh, maybe we need to pass an ordinance um, and it needs to be something, um, you know, I, something more uh, official in, and banning plastics um, in foam or, or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, it, we just have to keep pushing the agenda and, and eventually you'll, you'll break through. I would note that there is legislation planned this year, again, like last year, uh, to ban styrofoam clamshells and styrofoam cups and things like that. If state legislation passes, then that would take care of it for us and everybody. Right. Yeah. Well, uh, Charlie, maybe um, we want to discuss um, at a later time um, us recommending that the 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 city of Rehoboth Beach um, write a letter of endorsement for for such a law. I mean, those are the those are the things that we can do that may have an impact. Um, may I? I really feel that we, of course, again, we're dealing with COVID. Um, I feel we need a regular meeting date um, so we don't miss any months. We have very little time together. And I feel that we need to meet with all the other stakeholders, at least as a brainstorming. I mean, there's a boardwalk committee, there's solar, there's all the different, all the different people. It's almost like we're competing in, in our city. Um, and I, I feel that we need to meet together and come up with um, what we're about. This was suggested 
when we met with people in Newark, they they did this and have had great success because they were all working together for the same goals. But we can't come up with goals unless we meet, unless we come together. But first of all, I mean, I'm dealing with two different things. I think we need a regular meeting date and if we can come or not come, okay. But it needs to be on the city calendar, a regular meeting date. And I think we need a meeting fairly long meeting with all the different stakeholders that are involved in our environment in Rehoboth. I think that's great. So I, to, to answer your, uh, your, the first point, Natty, we are meeting the first Friday at 1030. Um, that is the standard meeting. Okay. Uh, this, this past this Friday um, had to get rescheduled and that was because of me and I I apologize for that, um, but that is our, our standard meeting time um, is the first Friday, 10.30. Um, I, and I do think that having in sort of a environmental town hall, you know, afternoon or something where we have all of the stakeholders could be, uh, could be very beneficial. Um, and I think that's going to be very hard to do until we start meeting in person again. Um, I'm sorry, uh, you're on mute, Heather, if, uh, if you were saying something. Oh, I just said that would be wonderful. I look forward to that. <laughs> um, I, I suspect that that may happen in the next month or so. Um, um, I hope. I don't know if Charlie, uh, you're trying to show us something, but we can't see it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just holding up a piece of paper here. Oh, sure. Um, but but Nettie, your your points are are well taken. Um, with with that, if no other comments, we'll go to um, the new business um, item that I put on the agenda, which you know specifically. Uh, um, said noise pollution um, discussion related to leaf blowers and other landscape equipment. So, um, Mary, you made a good point. Noise pollution isn't very an environmental issue. I mean, I guess some can argue it, it can with disturbance of wildlife and, and things like that. But if that is what the citizens of Rehoboth Beach care about is noise, then let's take advantage of that and talk about things that can reduce noise um, and not use gas powered uh, equipment and stuff like that. So um, I, I think some of you had mentioned that uh, that this is something you want to talk about. So it, it's on the agenda and I'll open it up for, um, for discussion. But one thing I, I just wanna say, I, I think, yes, I would support that we do require um, electric, powered um, landscape equipment like Lewis, I guess Lewis got that rule going. Um, and that could be not necessarily just for the noise pollution, but for our climate action. And also I, I'd be willing to work on, if, if you're open, um, two ordinances, one anti-idling ordinance, two, um, going to gas powered landscape equipment um, and kind of put them under the umbrella of our, uh, of climate action. I, I... May I respond to that? I'm thinking that Edward and maybe me too, uh, we, uh, I would suggest that if we incorporate the idea of uh, banning or phasing out of lawn equipment that's gasoline powered, it may be tied up for a lot longer in our development of the climate action plan. If we treat it separately, it might move through the process more quickly. I know that things move slowly in Rehoboth Beach, but anything we can do to get it going a little faster, I'd be in favor of it. Um, if you wanna deal with them separately outside of the climate action plan, I think that might help make it happen. Um, yeah, I, I, that's what I'm, I'm suggesting we can work on some of these things before we actually have a climate action plan officially in place, but um, it's still kind of, 
we're doing it to under the um, top of, of trying to do something about climate action. But um, I'd be willing to look at what Lewis did and see whether similar language might might be something our mayor and commissioners would be willing to consider as an ordinance here. Lewis has got a phasing out of that equipment. Maybe we could devise a mechanism to, to phase it out on the same schedule with Lewis so it would be consistent and we'd be, you know, in solidarity with our brothers and sisters of Lewis <laughs> uh, to, it'd be better perhaps for the lawn equipment uh, services to meet the same schedule, so both places. Yeah, so I, I'm, not familiar, I'm sorry, Edward. No, go, go ahead, Eric. Yeah, so I'm not familiar with uh, if we have any plans as a township. Uh, um, there was two things in the letter. The first thing was, was there was an enforcement issue, right? So um, I don't know that if that's, that's probably not our committee's thing, but it sounded like there was a problem with the enforcement of the noise. And two, you know, when I, I look at that, I, I, I hear about that. I, I think that you know, we should, are, are there plans to lead by example? Um, you know, so the township um, is to lead, are they, are there plans to go uh, electric powered? You know, which, which I would think would give us more teeth. I don't, I don't know how the plan of Lewis is going, um, but it's just a question I had. Yeah, I, I think right now there is no plan. I think our job here is to tell the city of Rehoboth Beach that you should have a plan and this is what you should this is okay. what we're enacting. Um, I think that's our role here. Um, and I, I, don't, I don't know anything about the, the, what Lewis is doing. I, I would be interested to, Mary, as you're looking at this, know what the counter arguments about adopting such a, an ordinance would be. Um, I, I imagine that it's going to make the lives of the um, landscapers Harder. I'm sure they object uh, to it for, for whatever reason. Um, so I just want to make sure that we're, uh, it, we're prepared for all of those counter arguments. Any other thoughts on, on this topic? It sounded like Eric was suggesting the city of Rehoboth Beach might want to go first as displaying leadership so that we wouldn't have anything but clean electric lawn equipment. But I don't know that the city really owns a lot of such gear. Don't we just contract a lot of that out to Posado or the other people? And so. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and that's exactly what I'm, I'm saying, Charlie, is, you know, mm -hmm. so if we contract it out, you know, if you want the contract, you know, if you want to do business with us, this is what we require, um, you know, and, and, there's one way to get people to change. Um, you know, the power tools they have come a long way um, from 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 gas, and, and they're just as good. But you know, if we start, I don't know if that's any plans of the township. You know, and that's exactly what I'm saying is, if you want to do business in here, or if if the town has, you know, they should have a plan to maybe phase out as well some of their equipment. Um, but that's 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 my point, and then I think you lead at the top, and then you, you funnel down. I'm with you, Eric. Eric, could you could you make a motion to that effect, and then perhaps uh, you know for the town um, to do this, and then the commissioners can either vote yay or nay, and you know rather than you know well this is just something we suggest, so the yes. town could say this is what we're going to do we're going to lead by example uh it's it's not hard it it is taking a stand it's asking the commissioners to take a stand it is and I'm, and, I'm for that yeah and and you know it's coming it's it's we're, we're going to face out gas powered engines it's coming so yeah. why not lead yeah would you make a motion to that effect i'd be glad to second it <laughs> sure I mean, I miss. I, I I take a motion to to present that to the township that that you know they take a look at how they do business and 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 lead by example and 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 
and then it makes things a lot easier within the town to enforce, I think. And I second your motion. Okay. Uh, so Eric, just to be clear, the, the, the motion is to um, ask the city uh, to review its practices of, of using gas powered landscape equipment um, and consider phasing it out. Yeah, and themselves and, and as Charlie said, we may have a lot of contracts um, to, to, to warrant that in the contract. You know, I, I don't contracts come up and, and that can be a stipulation for doing business with the town of Rehoboth. Okay. Um, so the motion was made by, by Eric Seward, uh, seconded by, by Nettie Green. Um, all in favor? Yeah, if you could just put your hand up, that's easier to count. So four. Um, any opposed? Can I just say, I, I don't oppose it on the idea, but I think we need to be a little bit more specific because there are certainly different types of equipment. There are types of equipment where there isn't an electric option. Uh, I think it's a little overbroad. I definitely uh, agree with parts of it, but I think maybe we need to be a little bit more uh, in detail. I think it's a great idea and I don't wanna uh, just spitball it at them without giving it a little bit more detail. Um, and, and for that reason, the chair abstains. Um, so the, the motion carries uh, four to four to one, I'm sorry, five to one with one abstention. I will pass that information over to the mayor and commissioners. Um, and it sounds like that's gonna be um, related to the city's practice. Um, Mary, you're gonna come back to us with uh, some language of an ordinance that would be citywide on, on the entirety of uh, use of, of lawn care equipment? Yeah, so I'll, I'll try and see what Lewis and others have done and, and kind of get that language for everybody to see. Excellent. And we're, right. Just to, for a, a note, may I point out that, that um, a motion like this should probably be in our minutes and I don't know that we decided on who would be taking minutes of today's meeting. Oops. Uh, so <clears throat> I know that the last month we had a volunteer to take minutes uh, since Catherine Bergwin was not available to do so. Uh, maybe I should ask if uh, we could have a, that same volunteer step forward and prepare minutes and we'd have a, a written record of what it was that we moved and seconded, et cetera. Was that well, you, that Eric? That was me, but um, I oh. haven't been I haven't been taking notes this whole meeting. So, oops. Good thing that these these meetings are recorded. <laughs> uh, I don't want to put Joe on the spot. Is, is there anyone that would like to uh, volunteer to 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 draft these minutes? I mean, and I don't mind doing it if I if, if the meeting's recorded. I can just go back and listen again. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's pretty simple, and okay. I, I I wrote down sort of specifically what what I heard, um, and I'm happy to send it to you. Okay, yeah, I I, I don't mind doing it again. That's okay, fine. Great. Thank you. Um, with uh, with that, I think we've got some good uh, marching or, uh, orders forward. Um, I'm going to uh, oh, first let me. Uh, I'm sorry, I usually have multiple screens and I just have one today, so I'm, I'm flipping back and forth. Um, any any general committee member comments? Nettie? Again, uh, Edward, um, if I may insert, I don't think that we uh, have approved the minutes from last month's meeting, which is, I think, something we're supposed to do, or Ann Womack will get after me. <laughs> so, we are, we did. We did did that? all three minutes uh, at the beginning of this meeting. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I must have. Uh, you were you were dealing with me, probably <laughs> getting in or chasing uh, after my dogs or something. Uh, Thank yeah. you for taking care of that. Uh, I was just wondering about the recycling bins that have been there for a uh, year and a half, and if the commissioners are indeed uh, going to pay enough to have these recycling bins uh, put out on the boardwalk. 
Uh, yeah, Nettie, I think um, I asked Kevin Williams to give us an update on that last at the last meeting. Um, he said they are being put out um, this spring. Yep. Good, thank you. And with that, our next meeting is March, uh, a week from tomorrow, which is March 4th um, at 10.30 a.m. I'm sorry that this meeting had to get pushed back a couple weeks, but at least we're, we're not skipping a meeting and we still have got one uh, scheduled in, a, in just over a week. And um, it, with, uh, with that, I will, there's no, no public on the line for public comment. So with that, I will adjourn the meeting at uh, 1025 AM. Thank you everyone.